Well, I'm, that's what I'm working on. <laughs> right. All right. It's going to be a little goofy as I talk to you guys, and I'm talking to the people on the camera too. Um, today, we're going to be super sweaty. We have, did that thing just turn off? GT3, I, you know, I made up this term, but I call it maintenance correction. You know? I'm not really correcting anything because the paint, paint's still good. So, you um, got Aaron, Jonathan, I guess so I got two. Uh, one paid, one unpaid <laughs> assistance today. Um, the plan is to decon the paint. So we'll go through that three-step process. So what we're gonna do is, um, first we need to wash it, then we need to, um, um, when we're washing it, we're sort of stripping off the wax. So we're gonna use a little different soap than I normally would. Uh, and then we're gonna decon or iron exit or iron out it. So we get the iron off the paint. There probably isn't any, but we probably won't even be able to see anyway because the iron out turns purple. But traditionally what happens to cars, not so much around here, but in cities and things like that, you have, you know, if you have railways, ne railways nearby, you know, that iron kind of gets in the paint and then it, or it gets in the air and then it embeds in the paint. Yeah, and the only way to get it out is to get, it's a sort of a chemical reaction. So you spray the stuff on, it runs off. So after that, we'll pull the car in and then we're gonna, they're gonna, we're gonna clay bar or we're gonna, we're gonna actually auto scrub it, which is just a, a simpler process. The paint actually, it means dirty right now. It actually feels pretty good. Uh, the reason why I'm doing a, a maintenance correction is because um, I need more wax. You know, I'm about six, seven months in. So when you use a wax, you have to do it again. If you use the coating, well, I'd probably have two or three years before I would need to mess with the car again. I don't like coatings because they look synthetic. So they look weird. I mean, I grew up on wax, so I'm just I'm just accustomed to using wax. So let's first uh, let's first make our mixture of soap that we need. Same thing as last time. I've got some regular soap in here. So let me get a cup to pour this in because this is probably seventy a dollar fifty worth of soap in there. <laughs> This normal, this normal soap here, this is Adam's car shampoo. Um, we're gonna use, because obviously when you're washing the car, you don't wanna strip the paint off, right? Yeah. You just want to clean it. But today, we wanna clean, we wanna get the paint just stripped as much as possible. So we'll save that. And we're gonna use Chemical Guys Citrus Red. I think I have it in the cabinet. You think I know where all this stuff is. <laughs> when you have this much stuff, it's hard to remember. Yeah. And I need this. So we're gonna make a, you're probably fine just using this. You can put a couple of ounces in there. I mean, we're probably fine with just this, but I feel better about doing this and then a combination with an all-purpose cleaner just to get the paint. You know, the polish is going to take off a lot of the wax anyway, so we really have three different things, three different steps where we're taking the wax off before we get the polish. The key is you just, you just don't want some massive barrier of you know, wax or sealant or coating. You, know, you don't want... You don't want a ton of protection on the paint because then when you're polishing, you're not polishing anything. Yeah. So if you had like this ironclad coating on the on the car, how do you know when you've gotten the proper amount of wax on? You'll be able to tell because um, when we're when when we rinse the car, the water just sits on the paint rather than beading or sliding off. So you'll see, and even now when I spray the car down, the beading won't be nearly as good as it will be at the end. Um, so that's part of the reason why I know it's time to do. A correction or time to do a a you know a reapplication of of of, um, of of wax. So you know normally what you could do is just wash it off and add some more wax. I mean you could do that. 
but I can feel like if I, if I can run my hand across the roof and I can feel you know, contaminants even after a fresh wash and after a fresh detail spray, if you run your hand across the roof and you can feel little you know, specks of dirt and you know, pollen and things like that sit on the paint, then in my opinion, it's time to clay bar it or, or auto scrub it. And when you auto scrub it um, you're, or, or clay bar it, you're gonna mar the paint a little bit. Probably not visible to the eye, but it will take away some of the shine of the paint. So we're, that's going to be step two. I'll show you. Um, if you're familiar with the clay bar, yeah. so auto scrub is just a it's a uh, f more technologically advanced. It's a piece of rubber rather than clay, uh -huh. and I'll show you. It's a little quicker. We, we that's what we did last time. Nice. It's a little quicker than than claying. So the the plan here is to um, just get the paint clean, and in the process of cleaning the paint we're probably going to introduce a little bit of imperfections. We won't be able to see them unless we get a light out and really get a microscope. Um, but I always feel better polishing prior to a, a uh, you know, wax. So I traditionally don't, because I take such good care of the cars, I don't need to add wax in between. You know, so now I, I, the car's a little too dirty, even, even after washing, to just add a layer of wax, in my opinion. So I need to decontaminate it. So if I decontaminate it, then I need to polish it and then I need to add, add the wax. So um, if you weren't as anal, what you could do is just, you know, in six months, just clean it real good and just add another layer of wax and you'll maybe get another six months out of it or maybe three months. But, but because, you know, I'm so ridiculous about my cars, I just do a full, full, call it correction, even though all I'm doing with the polish is just ju sort of jeweling out the paint, okay. if that makes sense. So let me put some water in here <clears throat> and we'll foam it up. Every time I use this stuff, I mess up my, because you know, the foam cannon has an adjustment of how much, how much soap is being used. Every time I do this, it needs like a different setting, and then it takes me a few tries to get it back to the way I like it. Um, Aaron, can you grab me the sponges? I need to put some soap on them. So I got some new towels from the rag company as many of you on the YouTube channel have suggested. So, at first thought, I don't like them. So, sorry to break your, uh, burst your bubble, but I actually ordered a bunch of towels from another company called Microfiber Tech, which is another guy on YouTube suggested I consider. So I got another shipment of towels. What I did is I ordered like one of like 15 towels, and then I can decide which ones I like and which ones I don't. So another little secret trick, he knows this, but then the guys in the video, and you maybe have seen this, but put the soap on the sponge. That way, you know, if you ever put soap in the bucket and then you spray it in, it shoots out. I mean, this is, I mean, this is probably 25 bucks right here. So when you're using, you know, nice stuff, you don't want to waste it. Yeah. So when you put it on the sponge, you tend to get a little better suds and, you know, it tends to do a little better job of, um, yeah, exactly. All right. So let's get started because we're running out of shade. It'll be okay if we, you know, if the water, because we won't let the water sit. The key is you don't want to do it in the sun and get hard water spots. It's October. How many miles is it on it? 3,500. Yeah, well, I'm getting like. I have one, there's one little mark on the, uh, on, the, on the spoiler, which is a good place to have it down here somewhere, right there. And then there's one little mark on the headlight. See, I don't like clear film. Yeah, it's, it's, um, I just, I'm just careful about, you know, how I'm, how, you know, one of who I'm following, but following behind. I'm sure I'll have to do a whole video because people are always asking me about film, clear film. You know, if I lived in Michigan, you know, I probably would consider it. But living in Florida, yeah. you know, the only thing we got to worry about is sand. You know, sand is a problem. So this is a, what's fifteen, sixteen hundred dollar German engineered pressure washer. Well, theoretically, this should last me a long, long, long time, hopefully. So yeah, I mean, you try, I mean, this thing weighs like 80 pounds. I mean, it's, 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 
now we don't really, I mean, I got the pressure turned way down, so it's not like you need some super crazy pressure washer. I like it because it's electric versus gas. You gotta start it off and it's running the whole time. So the reason I bought it is because my, the, the company that I follow and learned most of this stuff from, Detailers Domain, they, uh, that's what they have, so that's what I bought. Now this pressure washer is not powerful enough to do anything to the, uh, well, yeah, to, or, or to use on your house or anything. You wouldn't want this. I mean, if you tried to do the stucco, you'd be sitting here all freaking day doing nothing. You know, it's just not, it's not powerful enough. The so first step is just, you know, just get some of the dirt off the car. You don't want to hold it super close, even though the pressure isn't really all that much on this, but you don't want to, you know, hit the wrong spot. So the water's still beating, but not as, not, it's not shooting off the paint like it could be. Gotcha. You know, and, and then if I run my hand across the paint, I can feel some, you know, some minor imperfections. Now in comparison to a normal person's car, it's darn near perfect. But to, for my standards, it's unacceptable. Uh, we'll do the wheels afterwards. So, because I gotta wash it several times, there's no reason to worry about the wheels right now. So see, the window is still beating much better than the paint. See how that's running off? Much faster it's running off versus, it's still running off, but it's not, quite the same. Now, I know I'm being nitpicky here, but that's the way I roll. So, I mean, you obviously don't have to have a pressure washer to do this. It's just the pressure washer helps with the foam. And it, if you got it, you might as well use it. So they make foam guns that you just stick on a regular hose. Now it more just sort of blows some soap on it rather than actually foaming the paint or, or you know, fo foaming the soap. Yeah, the... Um, like Adams, Adams Polishes has a good one. Um, the Foam Master 2 is like the old standard. You get it on Amazon for like 20 bucks or 15, 30 bucks, something like that. And you just run it on the regular hose. So you do these same kind of quick connects, you know, that make it quick and easy to, like I have quick connects on that hose. These are high pressure quick connects are a little different, but. Yeah, so you just do this so you don't have to screw it on and off. Same thing with the hose. So if you, you, if you had a foam gun for your regular hose, I'll just show you I have one. Um, you, uh, you can just clip it on and off. All right. So you can see I need to adjust this thing to get... Now we have foam. <laughs> 
Now, I know you know, the guys in the videos who have been watching this know this stuff, but for your sake, if you haven't seen all of them, you know, the whole purpose of this foam is to not to have suds on the car so you can move them around. It's so that the foam runs. You can see it running down the paint. It's hopefully loosening up whatever junk is on the car. So first step was I sprayed it off to get some of the heavy stuff. And then this takes another little bit of stuff off. And hopefully by the time I touch it with my wash pad, I'm not, you know, I'm not grinding 80% of the dirt's already off the car. That's, that's the hope anyway. And we'll just use up the rest of the soap since we got it. Since I won't want to use this again after the car is done because the um, it will strip off the wax, you know. By the way, this is one of my favorite parts of detailing is foam. Yeah. Love foam. Look at that. It's so cool. I can't wait to get a summer myself. But I want to learn like, you know, as much as I can about the whole process before I begin that. that yeah. Thing. Well, you're getting it straight from the source. <laughs> Spent half of my waking moments in life figuring this out. The other half learning about high finance. <laughs> All right. So we got the car foam. You know, normally if I didn't have a detailing assistant, you know, then I would foam the car first, then I would go fill up the buckets. You know, that way the foam has time to run off the car. Um, so of course we have one bucket with regular water, one with soap. Remember everybody's losing their minds about you not rinsing in the right bucket. So what we do is we wash with this, clean the car, come and rinse in this bucket, and then dip it back in there and then go back to the paint. So the idea is that I'm, you know, on the grit guard, I'm, you know, I'm getting, because there's a guard in the bottom here, I'm getting the dirt off the, you know, off the sponge. So you can see we got, just resuds this up. Part of the reason why I also usually, oh, we got things leaking a little bit. Oh, yeah, give me a little more slack. Yeah, so this is an Ely Corp. Um, I mean, this thing's serious. I mean, it's like 50 bucks or something like that. And then the hose is um, from, it's a good year, three quarter inch. I think it's called a Swivatec because this thing swivels here so that it doesn't kink. Yeah, I'm uh, embarrassed to say I'm 500 bucks into a hose. <laughs> You, you, you'll have to check out the reel, the hose reel. The hose is, yeah, like 175 or something like that. And then the, uh, you know, then the, the reel, the hose reel down at the, uh, down on the side of the house is what's expensive too. So if you feel this stuff, you can feel kind of the almost goo gone citrus, you know, it feels a little slimy. You know, that's the, that's the citrus based soap that's, you know, it's a little different than normal soap. So, I mean, like I said, the paint is still pretty. It feels soapy. Right, it feels like acidy, you know, because they're, we're trying to get the, the junk, all, you know, we're trying to get the wax off the paint. So, you know, I'll normally do. And that's all it takes, a little bit of, a, little bit of acidic. Uh... Yeah, I mean, some of it, it's not gonna get all the wax off, I'm sure, but some of it will come off. Um, so notice, you know, as I'm doing this, I'm not, you know, I'm not driving the, 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 the pad into the paint. Yeah. I'm just dragging it across. Start at the top, Aaron, or people on the video are gonna lose their minds. I did. Okay. Yeah. Start, go, go from top down. Yeah. Someone accused me, 
you didn't start at the top. I was like, oh, okay, well, sorry. The, the, key to the, the key to all of this stuff is, is not about doing it. You know, there's no perfect, I mean, I guess there probably is a perfect way to do it. But the key to this is to find a process that doesn't scratch the paint. Yeah. You know, and I'll, I'll, I'll argue that to the grave that that's the key to this whole thing is that if you figure out a process where your paint doesn't get jacked up, then that's all you really need to do, you know? So, you know, notice I'll, I'll, I'll do one section and I'll flip the pad. I mean, all simple stuff that, you know, makes common sense. The other thing you want to be, you know, careful, especially with love bugs, you know, here in Florida, um, you, you don't, you want to get most of the bugs off while you're, you know, while you're doing this step, but you don't want to sit there grinding away at the paint. You'd be better off with using a detail spray afterwards to get the rest of the bug junks off, you know, the rest of the bug junk off. I mean, you got to get most of them off, but. Yeah, or or what you if the, you know what love bugs what I'll normally do is I'll clean it like this, then I'll spray it off because then I'll get all the dirt and then I'll get my little bug mitt. I'll show you one and get the rest of the bugs off. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to get the bugs off first because then you're grinding in dirt while you're getting while the bugs are on the paint. Love bugs are, are fine to leave on for about a week, and depending on how much your car's sitting out in the sun, but you got to do it weekly. You know, or sometimes twice a week. You know, if you're out, if your car's parked out in the sun for, you know, hot, hot sun for hours and hours at a time. Right. No bugs are coming next month, May and May and September. The, the unfortunate thing for me is that I'm taking a trip to the mountains, so I'm gonna have to drive through, you know, this one, nice. northern Florida, right at the exact wrong time to be driving through Florida. <laughs> well, I bought this stuff that hopefully, uh, it's like a, like an invisible barrier. I don't know, I'm gonna test it out. Some people said it's not, it's not very good. It's called like Road Warrior or something like that. It's like a, you roll it on and then it peels off. So, you know, so the key is then, you know, the bugs and I can just peel the, you know, the bug jerky off. But it, I mean, if it really worked that great, I would assume that everybody would know about it. So we'll see. So here I'm being real careful to only do one pass, you know, from top to bottom and then rinse. One pass, flip, one pass, flip. I mean, again, this car isn't particularly all that dirty right now, but for my standards, it's dirty. So it would be more fun, more fulfilling to do a car that's all jacked up, you know, and you see huge results. But then you're also going to have huge amounts of time, you know, 20, 30 hours to do a proper full correction. Yep. So you're talking, you know, a solid Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 10 hours a day. It's a commitment. So it depends on how much you care about your car. If you spend 160 k on your car like I did, you take a little bit more effort, you know. If it's your, you know, life's passion, your life's dream, you get your Model S or something, you know. Then you maybe step it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, well, at cold start, the M3 is really loud. With I left the valves open for you. Do you do the other side, Aaron? All right, we're done. Um, I'll, I'll do two, probably 
two 16 gig cards and then I'll probably do, you know, three or three, two or three or four eight gig. We, you know, I'll film this whole part, but I'll cut it down. But then when we're polishing, I'll just do, you know, I'll show you a section. I'm not going to polish the whole thing on video. I mean, already, I, the videos are already too long and boring. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron couldn't even watch the whole video, he was telling me. He wants it out. So he's starring in the darn video and he didn't even watch the whole thing. So that's when you know it's super boring for regular people. <laughs> yeah, especially me since I, uh... although today a CrossFit workout worked out great for me because it was based on, it was a calculation based on body weight. So if you did an air squat, you got like one times your body weight. So I, we killed everybody, Michelle and I. <laughs> because I'm 230, everybody else there's 160. So we just dominated that workout. But I gotta get back in shape. If I'm gonna be a YouTube sensation, then I bet gotta stop looking like such a punch ball on camera. Yeah, I know. Those, those might disappear someday. <laughs> What happened was, see now look, the water's not going anywhere, it's just sitting there. See how there's no, there's very little beading, it's coming off in sheets rather than big giant bubbles like it would. If I went and sprayed my M3 right now, there'd be huge bubbles just falling off the paint. This thing, there's no wax on it, so, and this is how you can tell it's time to re-wax too. When it starts to, when we start getting rid of those big bubbles, then you gotta go and redo it. Anyway, so what I did this year, every year what happens is I get in like phenomenal shape in January, right? <laughs> and, and then, I don't know, it's like that's just the way it works out. And then I get fat in the summer, you know what happens? Every, no, I should just stay in phenomenal shape the whole time, you know? I'm, I'm supposed to be like the superior human, right? Well, I can't stop eating, I love to eat, you know? Especially candy. Yeah, I can't do that. So, I, uh, you know, I try to do like 80-20 paleo. And so this year I said, you know what? I'm gonna do moderation through the winter. Well, moderation turned into maniac because everything I do, my entire life's theme is all or nothing, right? Either I'm either all in, total strict, perfect, or a complete disaster. So, I decided this year I'm gonna do moderation through Thanksgiving, through the holidays, just kind of eat like, you know, like I'd want, like I feel like it. Well, that turned into like six straight months of uh, eating frenzy and then I got the fattest I've ever been in my entire life. So now I'm trying to work it back off. It's hard. It's a lot harder at 35 than it was at 25. Yeah, so I'm wearing all this CrossFit gear on my, <laughs> not representing CrossFit very well. So everybody who hates CrossFit is like, look at this douchebag. You know, he's, he's 230 pounds, fat as can be. So I need, if I'm gonna represent the, you know, CrossFit, I better, uh, better step it up, get back in shape. I don't want to give the CrossFit. I don't want to uh, give the CrossFit haters even more ammunition. I also don't want CrossFit haters doing CrossFit because then there will be too many people in my way. I like the fact that, mo that a lot of people don't like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Get us some lunch. What were you saying?
of soap because like when I wash, I use a ton of water and soap goes into the ground. It doesn't go into like a, you know, mm -hmm. is there, do the griots and atoms. Like, do they kill the earth? Like pH. I think this stuff, I don't think it's bad. Um, I mean, I feel comfortable putting my hands in it, so I mean, maybe that's a bit naive, but I think that, you know, because especially the regular car stuff, the regular soap, the stuff we're about to spray on is pretty nasty, you'll see, uh, pretty caustic, but um, I figure if you can put your hands in it, it's not, it's not even, as, it's not even as, as bad as like putting your hands in Dawn, you know, it, it's not, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty uh, safe on your paint, so I would assume we're not dis completely destroying the earth doesn't kill my grass or anything so because these these drains run to a pipe down to the bottom of the yard and they don't you know, I don't have a big you know orange spot down there so I, so I think I'm okay all right so normally if you really wanted to do this right what you would do is now blow the car off and then do step two of decon so step one of decontamination is put some soap on the car clean it get the wax off as much as you can Step two is to iron out the paint. And we're just gonna get by with time-wise here with the, uh, with the um, sun. And only one of these works or else I'd have you guys spray it with me. <laughs> I just don't remember which one. Um, so this step is probably useless on my car, but it makes me feel good. So doing this is much more, as I was saying, it is, it's much more important, like on your car that's never been deconned, um, you would want to dry, you know, at least blow dry it, get it, get it reasonably dry, just so this stuff is, is, is getting directly onto the paint. See, but take a whiff of that. Don't put it too close. It's pretty nasty. It smells like awful. It's like one of the most awful smells in the world. <laughs> Um, Death. <laughs> what is it? You remember the old uh, stink bombs? Yeah. That's, that's what it reminds me of. Between smells that, like it's going to do something. That and walking into a women's hair salon. Yeah, and like a. Uh, there you go. Stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like battery acid. So I would, again, if my car, if I knew there was tons of iron on it, or it was the first time I was doing this, I would spray it on. I'd get like a microfiber towel that I didn't care about and just kind of smoothly wipe it in and just to make sure I didn't miss any spots. But I almost guarantee you, maybe back by the exhaust, but we're probably not going to see any purple on this. Plus, the paint's blue, so we're going to... Yep. So you can tell the, you know, the chemical reaction that's happening when the whatever's in this stuff. I put it on the windows too. I coat them. I coat them with a nano coating. Polishing windows is a sort of a waste of time. Because you're not really doing anything. I mean, to, to really polish a window, you're going to have to spend, I don't know, 45 minutes on a 12 inch section. So if you do have scratches in your windows, you can get them out, but you're gonna spend half of your natural life trying to get. Gotcha. Yeah, I didn't know if there was anything special. You know, separate. now if you're gonna do a coating, like a true coating, which I actually just ordered, a, uh, this company called Gion that I'm gonna try to replace. Remember I was complaining about wolves and how I can't get it anymore? Well, it's still hard to get. I, I, someone will buy it for me in the UK or someone and ship it to me, but yeah. it's a blue, little blue container thing. Like, did we, did we put on the window with our fingers or with that little piece of microfiber? Well, they don't import it to the US anymore, so it's hard to get. And I've had a lot of really cool people offer to send it to me, you know, in the UK and stuff that watch my videos. And um, somebody else turned me onto this. <coughs> oh, shoot, this stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's a company called Gion, so I'm going to try a new 
window coating. Not this time, because I don't have it yet. I haven't gotten it yet. But if I, when I'm gonna use that, I would probably do a quick, just a quick glass polish, even though it really won't do much. Yep, yep. So glass, you need to use a different type of pad. You don't have to worry about heat buildup as much with glass. So you use what's called the rayon pad, which is a really thin pad. And just sit there and grind it out. All right, so we let that sit for a minute or so. We gotta be careful because the mirror is out in the sun. Let that process. You know, this probably shouldn't be the case, but I feel really accomplished when I feel finished like a bottle of something, which shouldn't be that way because I now have to buy more. But then I, I, think, I think I like buying more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I got some work done. Maybe that's just completely crazy, but. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, okay, I finished a bottle of something. Now I can. Yeah. So let's see if we can see any purple. It's going to be. Yeah, it's going to be really hard to see on this paint anyway. I don't see any. Yeah. See, uh, we went and sprayed your car, it would be purple crazy. You know, or my wife's car, which I'm not allowed to wash. That was part of the deal. I'm not allowed to wash that car. The, the, she, she doesn't explore sport. Well, it's the time. Time versus, you know. So, we, you know, part of the agreement was we leased her a car, which was a terrible idea because she's got 44,000 miles. And I still have a year left, and we only have forty-five thousand. We all know leases are the Well, but here's the, the advantage for me is the car when they when she trashes it, she curbed all the wheels and stuff. I don't care. <laughs> so there's there's money versus peace of mind, and in my world of of OCD, it's easier for me to cope with losing money than it is losing mind. If you know what I'm saying. So now in 11 months, I'm gonna take that car and give it back. Probably, uh, Here you go, Ford. Making your, making your lease payments by not buying products for it. <laughs> I do spend a lot of money on detailing products. Hopefully, if this website gets awesome, I'll get everything for free. So donations or dealer deals? Yeah, it better be. If I'm selling all this product, because that's the thing that's really shocking to me is how much you know people are following the videos. You know, I'm just a guy, you know me, I'm just a guy in my garage hanging out and people are really following what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and I get it because I'm a little older than the vast majority of the people that are watching my stuff and, and I'm a total maniac when it comes to you know, learning and evolving and you know, whatever you want to call it. Nice yeah, and having a GT3 doesn't hurt. Hey Aaron, there's a, grab that ring there, that ring. It goes around the edge of the, yeah, it goes right there. It's so that it, you know, if you actually use those, it seals it up. See that glass coating, that, that Wolf's glass coating, one of the reasons why I like it so much, look, it's still shooting water off of it. And we just decon it. We just sprayed it with iron out and with a citrus-based um, wash, so it, it doesn't come off. So really the washing step you know, that we just did, you just use a different soap, but it's the same basic process. Yeah, and if you wash it like that every time, I mean, other than doing the wheels, then you won't mess up the paint. And we're gonna talk about drying here in a minute. Drying is more important than washing, I think. Because yeah, if you dry it wrong, then you'll scratch the crap out of the paint.
especially now that this paint is completely exposed. You know, now or, or after a polish, the last thing you want to do is polish it out and then, because yeah. I'm going to wash it off after polish to get all the polish residue and all the little, you know, little particles and stuff. If you aren't careful, you just go and introduce all kinds of scratches just in time to put a new, you know, coat of wax on. You notice my new GT3 sticker? You didn't know, you don't know. <laughs> you know, I had a big, it, it said, it said Porsche GT3 in big raised letters. Well, I took all those off and put the decal on. Much like the RS. Normal people can't understand why anyone would want to take Porsche off the back. Well, I'm not normal. I want it clean. I want it to look seamless now gosh <coughs> this stuff is terrible like breathing in that so i learned this on my carrera s that i took all the badges off and it looked a little weird you know the bumper is kind of big and without any badge on there it looks it looks clean but from certain days i would look at it and not like it so i decided that i was going to be much like the like the cup car the gt3 rs they don't put a big big, you know, raised badge. It's just a decal that says, you know, GT3 RS. So I decided I was going to do that. Naturally, two days before I got it, some other guy did it. So it looked like I was copying him. I mean, it doesn't matter, but I thought I was super smart coming up with that idea when really it's been done a thousand times you know, the, the older 997s and stuff. So see, this water is literally just sitting in a sheet on the paint, you know, it's not going anywhere. It is slowly running off, whereas the window is still shooting water off the paint. I mean, there's not a bubble of water on the paint, it's just one big blah layer, because there's no, there's no protection on it. All right, I'm gonna blow this thing off real quickly and then we're gonna pull it in and dry it off. So, let me see what we got video-wise. I'll do a few, few seconds of video. Now, natural question with using a leaf blower is what about getting gas and oil all over the car? Well, yeah. <clears throat> well, um, Maybe that's Are true, they, but... Are they saying there's stuff that gets into there? I guess. I don't freaking know. Uh, seem like horrible Maybe with a really cheap yeah, leaf blower. And I'm sure it's not the cleanest, most filtered air, but... I don't know. The, 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 I, you know, I bought, I had, there's something called a Master Blaster, which a lot of people uh -huh. really like. Yeah, it's heated, filtered, it's, you know, it's like eight, eight horsepower and, you know, gives you a certain CFM velocity out the thing. And it certainly gives you more, um, you know, more output than this does, but then you got to drag this freaking vacuum around. It drives me nuts. So you got this hose and a vacuum and... I saw somebody do a detail on a super It works great. You know, it's just, I had one and I sent it back. I'm like, this is too annoying. Hey, Aaron, don't worry about cleaning that up totally because we're going to need it again. Remember, after the, uh, after the decon, after the pop of the um, clay. The other thing is blowing off the car now is not really going to do all that much because the water's just sitting there. You know, when you have it waxed, then most of the water's going to come off. I mainly just want to try to get it out of the crack.
heavy stuff off. I'm gonna pull it in, and then we're gonna do uh, auto scrub real fast. Since there's three of us, we can knock this out really. Okay, so now we're gonna, I didn't, no, it depends on how I'm feeling, but since this is a small car, I'm not gonna worry about drying it off. Uh, we're just gonna, since there's three of us, we're gonna knock this out real quickly. Um, but uh, the third step of decontamination is we need to now clay or auto scrub the car. So um, what we're gonna do is, I got some, st auto, uh, some, some stuff mixed up, some details where I mixed up. Uh, I'm going to use a clay bar, you're going to use the little auto scrub thing, and he's going to use the um, auto scrub on the orbital. So, auto scrub is this. See, it's a little piece of rubber, and there's little diamonds on here that are raised, and you're going to put this on the machine, and then, you know, and then it sort of orbits. And then you can also use it with a pad and just sort of work it out. Okay. And then you can also use a piece of clay that does the same thing. The key is, is that it bonds specifically or, or with the, you know, the complete top of the clear coat and just pulls everything off. But this is what will create a little bit of marring in the paint, no matter how much you try not to. It's going to. Most of it won't be visible, though, so we'll be fine. So we're going to use this on setting two. I hope I plug it in. <clears throat> the only thing that stinks about making videos is I normally like watch like a series of something you know on TV, <laughs> but when you're making videos, it distracts me. I've tried doing that. Right. Yep. So he's he's gonna hose down the paint, and then this does its thing. So with this one, what you do is pull, and then release and it'll stay on its own. So pull, thumb, let go. Okay. Setting two should be more than enough. Okay. Actually, yeah, setting two. And you can't use too much of this, so you do your thing, and then I'll show him what we're gonna so do. You can't, you can't overdo that. Nope, as long as, as long as you use enough detail spray, you, you know, you just want to use a crap load of it, then you might as well just, just hose the whole front of the car down. Um, as, long as, you, as long as this thing isn't grabbing, even then you're really not going to mess anything up. It's just not working if it's not grabbing. But so what you're doing is you're creating a thin film over the, over the paint so that this can then glide across. So that's what it looks like. If you feel it start grabbing, then you need to add some more detail spray. And then you come out with a super smooth finish. One yeah. Third of the time. Yeah, I'm gonna get another detail spray thing going here. Yeah, so what is that? Some something on there. Is that just a yellow thing? Oh yeah, it's a piece of clay. So he'll do the big panels. If you do, do the fenders and just carry this stuff around with you. He's gonna do the roof. You do the, uh, do this area. You just do, you do it by panel so you remember where you, you know, where you left off. And just, and, and again, you can't use too much detail spray. Oh yeah, it's not. It's not, not You can do the lights too. So, I mean, people in the video get the idea here. Actually, I'll film you guys while you're, and then you can do the front bumper.
headlights, Yeah, everything. Now polish, we won't polish the headlights, but we will decontaminate them. And Aaron's over here using the roof as I sold my Grios. Spray some more on there, Aaron. Yeah. Just keep hitting it. Rather be safe than sorry. Anyway, you guys get this. We're auto scrubbing, clay barring the car. I'm gonna use a clay bar on the windows and stuff. All right, so it's drying. I mean, what if you're a really anal? You're really scared about what you could do is this. But that's annoying to me. So what I do is this. <laughs> you just don't want to, again. Do you do quarters or just? Eh, it doesn't really. Matter. Yeah, I just get it dry. See, normally we would have this 90% dry, but my darn leaf blower wasn't working for some reason. So. Um, these are. A waffle have? weave. Waffle weave. Waffle, waffle weave microfiber, yeah. Yeah, these are from these are microfiber towels for my car. These are from Adams. I've tried a bunch of them, but I like these the best. Yeah, so like with anything, it's all about just like with washing, it's about being gentle. Now, this stage doesn't matter quite as much because we're gonna polish out the paint, but you know, we don't want to be stupid. We don't want to add scratches if we can help it. <clears throat> you uh, scrub your blades with the same towel, or? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Towel? Just not the wheels. I always forget to tell people that. <laughs> Michelle, Michelle almost dumped me because I was teaching her how to wash her car, and she used the same drying towel on the wheels, and I yelled at her. I wasn't even an expert detailer at that point. Yeah, yeah, it was a tough one. We were dating. I was teaching her how to wash a car. So what are you doing? Don't use that towel. She almost, almost bagged it right then and there. She? Yeah. Should have been me, right? No, no, that's the proper perspective. It's, it's almost messed it up. Yeah. Yeah, she should know better. I mean, she should, I should have been the one that was offended because she was messing up my towel. Yeah, these new microfiber madness towels. So this thing was like, I don't know, 30 bucks. It's junk. I'm just using it just to remind myself why I don't like it. Just to make sure. It's just, it just doesn't dry as well. I mean, it's big and fluffy and really fancy, super expensive, which normally appeals to me. The more expensive, the more it appeals to me. <laughs> right, yeah. It looks really good. It was good to sit here and stare at it, but it'd be like, it'd be like if this GT3 shined up really nice but only had like 200 horsepower, it wouldn't be very much fun, you know? What was your first car? Very first car? I think you said it was like a Civic. Well, that was my first tuner car. <laughs> my first car was a 88 Pontiac Sunfire GT Turbo. It was awesome. It was blue. Wait, it's an 88 Turbo? 88 Pontiac Sunfire GT Turbo. You know, so it was a turbo. Little, little 1.8 liter turbo. It's pretty much a pile of garbage. It's twenty five hundred bucks. Then my second car, because that one didn't can only go one place at a time, is it would it would overheat. My second car was almost a Ford Probe GT. Remember the Ford Probes? They're like a little hatch. It's like a hatchback two door, and and it was. Um, I think so. You know, I was in. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, they were kind of like moon shaped. Almost they were, you know, but they, the beauty of it for me as a, you know, as a, as a high school kid is that it was a manual, which I wanted. Mm -hmm. 
and it was a hatch, which is great for, you know, I'd put some 15s in the back, you know, some, some serious subs in the back. That was the key. But, but my dad wouldn't let me get it. He said it was too fast. So I got a red automatic V6 Chevy Beretta. It was freaking horrible. It's like pretty much my nightmare. All right, so we're gonna close the door. I don't think we need to go back outside. It'll cool off a lot in here when we do this. So if you'll follow me with this towel, I'm gonna blow off the little jams and all that stuff. So I got the air conditioner or the air compressor out. I got this crappy little air compressor. I've been restraining myself. I want to buy an Ingersoll Rand, like giant, you know, industrial, dry, yeah, dry some two-stage oil cool, you know, massive air compressor. But I don't have anywhere to put it in here, so that's something I'm gonna do when I build the other garage. Put it up. Yeah. Room up here. I do. So don't don't give me any ideas. <laughs> So because we're gonna tape off the car for polish, last thing you want is water running down as you're polishing. And you gotta change the pad out because it gets all wet. So you wanna make sure that you get all the water out of the, out of the jam. First, we got to do the. Forgot about this. Yeah, the doors and the. Yeah, you like that? Yeah, little well, that's Rise, little Recaro seat because there's no back seat in the GT3, so he has to sit up front. The baby Kate. Baby Kate doesn't get to uh, ride in the GT3 until she's big enough to. Well, that's something I need to do a, a video, but. I mean, the most I get is a little bit of dirt, um, but I, I, the only thing I have is leather, just from leather a, care. Just from a wow perspective, I would say that would get a lot of views because the interior of the Porsche is beautiful. Yeah, it's really hard to shoot, you know, to get the video in there, and which I, I'm going to do. I'm going to do one, but um, I'm not a detailing interior detailing expert. You know, again, I probably know more than most people, but. I don't have like extractors and steamers and all the tools because I don't need them. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not eating Big Mac in my car, you know, so. Well, you're yeah, I'm not. You ever had a drink in your car? Water bottle, there's a bottle of water in here. <laughs> but I don't really drink anything else but water anyway. I don't think, uh, my kids are not allowed to eat. Cars have cup holders. But like my, it actually does have two cup holders or maybe one. Yeah, I mean, you can't really fit anything in it, but. Oh, yeah, there's two. See, look at that. You know? That's the first time I've ever used that. That's the first and probably last time I'll ever use that. Although we are driving to. Here, pull these here. We're going to be driving all the way to, to the uh, mountains. Right yeah, well, I'm, I'm built, putting a roll bar in on Wednesday mm. for for all the tracking that I'm not going to do, <laughs> but it's going to look cool. Do you, do you think one day you're going to do that? No. I already tried. I already tried. Been there, done that, and I'll go occasionally, just not in my cars. It's just I'm a sissy, you know. Yeah, uh, rental cars. <laughs> well, you. you well, what you do is you go do like, yeah, racing, uh, Skip Barber, you can do the um, Porsche driving experience, the BMW M School. That's the kind of stuff that I like doing because you get to drive somebody else's car. But I only like doing that occasionally because I'm just wound so tightly. It's just hard for me to relax and enjoy it. It's just not fun for me. I feel like I'm going to die, you know. <laughs> I, I like that educational aspect. 
yeah, enter entry, trail braking, you know, the actual, you know, the physics behind what you know, the best way to drive it. It's just the violence of what you're doing, you know, the, you know, the way you're actually supposed to brake and the way that you're supposed to, you know, when you, when you enter and exit a corner, it's just not fun for me. <laughs> I just like going out on a back country road and winding and out a little bit and, you know, just enjoying the, the time with my car. Or what I really enjoy is hanging out in the garage and detailing it. But the, you know, the, the violence of the track. And, you know, I've been in cars with guys who are legit, you know, drivers, and it's like, I don't want to be able to do what just happened there. <laughs> you, know, you know, I really don't care to just to do, to replicate that. I don't know. The only place I've been, I, that's the only that's the track I've been to a couple times to see bring. Yeah. Were you driving or were you riding? No, 